What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. Of the 13 absolutely insane courses that I took in my first year, one of these courses was Physics 158. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course, and some survival tips to help you get through it. And believe me, there's a lot I wish I knew before going into Physics 158. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Physics 158 during the 2022-2023 school year. And all the information from this video is subject to change in the future, so please don't get mad at me if your final exam is worth like 75% of your grade now instead of 48% like I had it. And timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. So what is Physics 158 all about? In this course, which is the second introduction to physics for engineers, you'll learn all about the concepts of waves, circuits, and electromagnetism. For the waves part of the course, most of the content is centered around superposition, which is what happens when waves interfere with each other. In the circuits part, you'll learn about different components and how different circuits behave. And in the electromagnetism part, which will probably be the most confusing part of this course, you'll learn about how this can be used and a bunch of guys who had equations and laws named after them. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how Physics 158 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Before each of your lectures, you will have pre-readings to do and pre-reading quizzes to complete. The pre-readings are just a few sections from the textbook at a time that you will have to read to prepare for you for the content that will be taught in lectures. The pre-reading quizzes usually have between three to five multiple choice questions on them with a mix of single answer and select all that apply questions. These quizzes are due before most of your lectures. Throughout the week, you will have three hours of lectures to attend that will consist of conceptual questions, discussions, demonstrations, and activities to work on. Attendance is technically not mandatory, the lectures are not recorded, and the lecture slides are posted after each lecture. During your lectures, iClicker questions may be prompted for you to answer, which are short multiple choice questions that are shown on screen. These are usually conceptual questions or may require a short calculation, and for my year, our iClicker participation was graded. You receive one point if you answer the question and another point if you answer the question correctly. However, as we will see in the grading scheme section of this video, the small percentage that iClicker participation is worth is almost insignificant. Additionally, I did hear firsthand from someone in the physics department that they were actually thinking of changing the participation requirement for future years, so you don't really have to worry all that much about the iClicker questions. Additionally, during the week, you will have a one hour tutorial session where you'll be given some problems to work on from a TA and iClicker questions to answer for participation. The tutorials in Physics 158 were all based on participation in my year, as you just had to answer the iClicker questions to receive credit. This is somewhat likely to change in the future, so don't be surprised if you will have actual assignments for your tutorial sessions, just like in Physics 157. In terms of homework, there are two types of homework that will be alternated between each week in Physics 158, Mastering Physics homework and Written homework. Mastering Physics homework is accessed online using the Mastering Physics system and consists of 8 to 10 questions of moderate difficulty that are from the textbook. These questions can be attempted multiple times each, but a deduction will be applied for each incorrect attempt. You are able to attempt each Mastering Physics homework assignment twice before the due date, and your highest score will be recorded for that assignment. The written homework is accessed on Canvas and consists of 5-6 to six questions of moderate to complex difficulty. In these assignments, you must show all of your work and explain your answers with sentences and equations. Additionally, you'll need to draw a diagram for each question. Once you have completed your written homework answers, you'll need to submit a PDF copy of your homework, either paperless or scanned, to Gradescope, where it will be graded. Your TA will grade two questions in full detail worth five marks each, and the other questions for numerical correctness, either zero or one mark. Lastly, you lose one mark overall if your submission is not neat. Again, you will alternate between either having mastering physics or written homework each week in Physics 158. In terms of the required materials for this course, you're going to need a few things to help you get set up. First, and this one's kind of a no-brainer, but a calculator will definitely help. 
You can use a scientific graphing or any calculator that you want to, just no calculators with wireless capabilities. Second is an access code to Mastering Physics. Luckily, the Mastering Physics access code that you bought for Physics 157 will also work for Physics 158 as well. As it should, because I would not want to have to pay another $40 to have the ability to do homework that is worth 5% of my grade. However, if you did not take Physics 157, you will have to pay for the access code on the UBC Bookstore website. And lastly is the textbook for this course, which is the University Physics with Modern Physics textbook by Young and Friedman. The current edition is the 15th edition, but older versions are completely acceptable. This is the same textbook that was used in Physics 157, so if you already have a copy of that, you won't have to go out and buy a new textbook. But if you do not already have it, I'll have a link in the description below to a place where you can download a free PDF copy of it. Alright, now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in Physics 158. There are 13 weeks in the term and the course is sectioned off into three different topics. Waves, circuits, and electromagnetism. In the first two weeks of the course, you'll expand on the waves content that you were introduced to in Physics 157, covering concepts such as wave interference, longitudinal waves, beats interference, double slit interference, and thin film interference. This will be your first taste of of what Physics 158 is like, and you're definitely gonna have some strong opinions of this course after these first two weeks. In the next four weeks, you'll be covering concepts related to circuits. You'll start off with some high score review of DC circuits and Kirchhoff's laws, and then transition into learning about capacitors, inductors, RLC circuits, AC circuits, and time-dependent circuit analysis. Pretty much the learning goal for this part of the course is to be given a circuit diagram and to be able to determine certain behaviors and values of certain components after a certain amount of time. And in the last six weeks of Physics 158, you'll be covering concepts related to electromagnetism. And this is probably the most difficult part of the course because it will involve a little bit of calculus in there. And also, it's just really confusing. You'll first cover the electro part of electromagnetism, covering concepts such as electric charge and electric fields, Gauss's law and electric flux, and electric potential and its relation to electric fields. Then it's the magnetism part of electromagnetism, learning about magnetic fields and forces, Lenz's law, Maxwell's equations, Ampere's law, Faraday's law, and electromagnetic waves. Man, I never knew that a bunch of laws and equations named after some dead guys can be so confusing. Heck, I still barely understand these equations and I'm going into electrical engineering for Pete's sake. But that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in Physics 158. In terms of the grading scheme for Physics 158, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. I will make a disclaimer here that the physics department is almost certainly going to be changing these weightings in the future as one of the spokespersons actually talked to me about it and said they were going to change it and they are thinking of placing less weight on the exams. Starting with your in-class eye clicker participation, this is weighted at 2% of your final grade. Your tutorial participation is weighted at another 2%, and your pre-reading quizzes are weighted at another 2%. Your mastering physics homework is weighted at 5%, and your written homework is weighted at 7%. In terms of exams, you will have two midterm exams worth 17% each, and a final exam worth 48%. Again, this part is the most likely to change in the future, so don't be too worried about how high these are weighted. For Physics 158, you do need to obtain at least 45% on the final exam in order to pass the course. On the exams, there will be a mix of multiple choice questions, short answer questions, and longer written questions. A lot of the time, the questions won't even involve any definitive numbers, and you're going to have to extrapolate a lot of the information from the question and your formula sheet. Luckily, unless something drastic changes for the exams in the future, there is generally enough time to actually write the exam, which reduces the pressure of needing to work extremely quickly. Oh, and speaking of your formula sheet, this is a sample of what our formula sheet looked like, and honestly, it's very difficult to even call this a formula sheet because of how hard it is to read. Also, this formula sheet didn't even have some of the formulas that we actually needed for the exam, so take that as you will. 
Prior to the exams, the physics department will post a few sample exams with solutions for you to study from, and that's about it. I don't get it. The best way to study for this course is to do practice questions, but they barely give us any questions to practice from before the exams. Yes, you can do the textbook problems or find your own problems, but most of them don't come with full solutions to them. So you're kind of stuck if you're stuck on how to do a certain question. I'm just really hoping that they change this and just post the last 10 years of exams to study from, just like in Physics 157. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and things to know before heading into Physics 158, and I'm pretty sure a decent number of you skipped straight to this part of the video. To be completely honest, as we will see in a second, I didn't do the best in this course, so I'm not really the type of person to give advice on how to do well in it. The most that I can do personally is to let you know about the things that you should know before going into this course, so that you won't want to throw hands with any of the professors if any of these things inevitably happen. Regarding the lectures and the professors, there are a few things that you'll want to know before you head into your first lecture. Firstly, I'm not really sure who's going to be teaching Physics 158 in future years, but generally speaking, the professors are questionable in terms of their teaching abilities. Unless you've got Professor Marina Litinskaya, who's actually a really good prof, most of the other Physics 158 profs are mediocre at best. And if you happen to get the infamous Professor Michael Hasanoff, all I have to say is good luck. Second, the lecture slides look absolutely horrendous and definitely do not follow the seven C's from APSI 100 and 101. They're really cluttered and generally just don't give you the information that you need to know for the exams. Combine that with a prof that reads straight from the lecture slides, <clears throat> friends, and you're going to be looking at a lot of self-studying outside of class. Third, I would just highly recommend sitting next to your friends during lectures and working on homework and readings with your friends as well. Physics 158 is absolutely insufferable to endure by yourself and having these friends with you along the way will make it ever so slightly more bearable. Additionally, they may be able to help you out when you inevitably don't understand something. Fourth, expect to be very confused with many of the concepts and how to actually solve the homework and exam questions. Unfortunately, Physics 158 is not well designed enough for us to feel ready for the exams, as the homework and exam questions can be extremely complex, and you're not actually taught how to solve these problems. Most of the problems in Physics 158 come down to this though. The lectures don't prepare you for the homework, the homework doesn't prepare you for the exams, and the exams are worth a huge portion of your overall grade. I really do hope they change this in the future with their course redesign that they're supposedly working on right now, but just expect the worst case scenario in case they don't. And because I was not the best student in Physics 158, I'm going to leave some links in the description below to some resources that will hopefully help you learn the concepts of Physics 158 much better. And lastly, I do want to address a certain elephant in the room. You don't actually have to take Physics 158. Let me explain. There is only one engineering program at UBC that you actually need Physics 158 for, and that is mechanical engineering. All the other programs do not require you to have Physics 158 to get into them. However, some of the programs like electrical engineering have courses in them that have Physics 158 as a prerequisite, in which you will basically need to take Physics 158. And then there are the remaining programs that only require you to have done Physics 158 or an equivalent credit course. This is where Physics 118 comes into the picture, which is the Faculty of Science equivalent credit course of Physics 158, and is generally known to be much easier and taught much better. The downside is that Physics 118 is only available for us engineering students during the summer. So if you know that the program that you want to go into doesn't have any courses that have Physics 158 as a prerequisite, you have the option to drop Physics 158 
and do Physics 1-1A in the summer or another time during your degree. And for those of you who are wondering, I scored a 68% in Physics 1-5A and the class average for my section was 67%, which was tied with Chem 154 and Math 152 as the lowest class average of all my classes in first year. And that's about it for everything that you need to know before going into Physics 158. I really, really hope this video and this series in general can help just one person going into first year UBC engineering in the future because I feel like my suffering in first year wasn't for nothing. Definitely stay tuned for more videos about UBC engineering, especially as I start my journey in electrical engineering this fall. And if any of you are heading to UBC this fall, feel free to say hi to me if you see me around campus. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.